you're going to incentivize something that you're not going to be able to deal with long term. The citizens of Lakewood are drowning and you're all talking about adding more water. Everybody's taxes are going to end up going up and the crime is going to become incredible, just like New York City. Council members say the proposed 100-bed navigation center would serve as a transitional home, providing job training and addiction and mental health services, mostly for those already in Lakewood. Worse, both the housing plan and a navigation center and any other social re resource may in fact support people who have immigrated here. I cannot build a wall between us and Denver. That, that's not city council's job. Lakewood City Manager says they have had one informational meeting with Denver officials on how Lakewood can help with Denver's homeless and migrant overcrowding and said there are no concrete plans to provide housing or services to those populations. Lakewood City Council meeting went on for seven hours and late into the night. The proposed Navigation Center grant was accepted with a vote of 10 to 1. Oh, Bill. Okay. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the illegal immigration crisis that has shown up to these liberal cities because they're getting exactly what they voted for when they voted for Biden, which is open border policies. And we got to talk about Denver, Colorado, once again, that is a sanctuary city. They are getting their fair share of illegals and clearly and obviously like a bunch of these other cities. They're also giving their fair share of complaints about getting exactly what they asked for. But we actually got to talk about surrounding neighborhoods and cities of uh, Denver who are concerned. The residents are concerned. They're outraged over negotiations and talks that are allegedly happening between these smaller towns and neighborhoods around Denver to help relieve Denver of their illegal immigrants. Okay, so Denver is trying to pawn off some of their illegal immigrants to some of the smaller towns and suburbs around the city. And the residents of one particular suburb, uh, Lakewood, they're not having it. Okay, they're upset, they're pissed off, and they are demanding answers for the allegations that their city is in negotiations to take in illegal immigrants. I mean, these people are panicking and freaking out over their city, potentially becoming like a New York, a Chicago, or a Denver. Take a look. This transfer station, which is going to turn into a money pit and a magnet for every criminal that's coming across the border. Don't we have enough problems in Lakewood without importing them from Denver, who is saying, yeah, Lakewood, you're stupid enough to take all of them. Take our problems, you dummies. It's a money pit. And you guys are responsible for our money. Don't screw it up. This is going to be a money pit. Can't you guys think five minutes ahead? Do us a big favor and just quit. Get your sorry butts up and leave. Any city resources, time or money, focused on non-citizens, necessarily steals from our infrastructure, schools, security and human services and we are already doing our part as federal taxpayers colorado springs has already told denver no migrants and you must do the same the city manager and city staff should be focused on the immediate needs of lakewood should residents who've lived here and paid taxes here their entire lives have to worry if their car will still be in their driveway tomorrow morning when they get up to go to work should they worry about shoplifters who have no fear of shoplifting cartfuls of items out of stores while they pay for their groceries? Focus on being good neighbors and fixing what ails Lakewood first. Last few years, we've seen our quiet Lakewood suburb turn into a place where there's drugs, prostitution, and crime all over. And we've seen increasing support for building facilities for the homeless but if we do that we're going to become the center for colorado to send their homeless um, i'd love to hear the actions that you're going to take to prevent a mass influx of migrants from coming into lakewood you could punish heavy drug use that we're seeing openly done at colfax and on the light rail um, you could take an active stance against human trafficking um, what are all these seedy massage parlors everywhere yeah so i want you guys to understand Lakewood is in Jefferson County, 
Colorado, Jefferson County, Biden won that district by about 18 points. 18 points in 2020, okay? So in that county, uh, a large majority of those people there voted for Joe Biden, okay? In their district, I believe it's District 7, they routinely uh, send Democrats to Congress to represent them, and now they're boohoo whining and complaining about the illegal immigration crisis. And that's not to say that all of those people that are complaining are Democrats. A lot of them are probably not. They're probably the very few Republicans, same people that are living in that area, county, district. But regardless, again, it's something to be said about these deep blue areas that are boohoo whining and complaining about illegal immigrants. In this case, these people are panicked about the idea of getting them, right? Not, not, not that they've already gotten them, but about the idea, just the idea that a homeless, um, unhoused, I don't know, camp or whatever they're talking about building. Okay. They have some woke terminology to describe it. Uh, they're concerned about the, uh, city council taking federal taxpayer dollars to open this thing up, right? Because they're like, no, no, no we, we see what's happening here. This is a Trojan horse, right? This is going to be used to uh, shuttle in illegals into our city, right? You, you claim you're opening up for the unhoused, right? But there's, that's also going to include illegal immigrants. You, you're not going to be able to gaslight us on this, right? And I think that they're right. There's 100% gaslighting, okay? Because these city councils, Again, look at how they voted here. They seem to be run by liberals, okay? And you know these liberals are collaborating with, with each other, and they're basically going to force this on these residents, regardless of whether or not they actually want it, okay? So that's what's about to happen. That's exactly what's about to happen, and these residents are upset, okay? They're upset about the fact that their local leaders won't do anything. But again, this problem really is a federal government problem, and that is why we have to talk about the big question in the room here, especially after New York's special election last night in which uh, the GOP lost a seat that was formerly held by George Santos to a Democrat, despite the fact that the GOP should have advantages when it comes to these moderate districts that are uh, suffering when it comes to this issue of illegal immigration. Again, in that district, illegal immigration was a big issue, but apparently voters went to the polls and voted against Republicans because they don't believe that Republicans actually have a solution or want to solve the illegal immigration crisis. Take a look. I heard from voters that they were very, now these are obviously um, very well-informed voters, right. but they were, they were at the polling station, they were voting early, and several of them said to me that they don't uh, want to vote for the Republican because it's clearly impossible to get a solution on the issue of immigration. They said border, uh, the border problem, the immigration issue, uh, the migrant issue in their district was the top issue for them. And that the fact that Republicans killed that bipartisan deal uh, put them over the edge to vote for Tom Swazi and immigration was their top issue. So I think that there's some. Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that, okay? If you want to believe Dana Bash, the top issue for some of these New Yorkers was immigration, which doesn't make sense considering the outcome of that election. But again, maybe it does have something to do with the fact that Republicans, like I've been telling you guys for the longest time now, are doing a terrible job of marketing the Secure the Border Act, which is supposed to be the Republican solution to secure the border. And I'm going to tell you guys why I think Republicans are going wrong. And it starts first and foremost with the Speaker of the House, Mr. Mike Johnson, who was confronted on what happened last night in that special election. And I want you guys to pay attention to his answer to this reporter's question about HR2 and the foreign aid legislation that was passed in the Senate that Mike Johnson is going to be pressured to take up in the House. Take a look. One more. Yep. Hey. Welcome back, Mr. Um, you have said that you want a meeting with the president, as Scott was saying. HR2 is, is dead in the Senate. You yourself were part of killing the Senate compromise bill. You called it dead on arrival from what you knew. So my, my question to you is, while you say there need to be solutions, what are House Republicans doing to get to a solution on the border and on Ukraine? Or are you going to actually do nothing? What is your proposal? What are you doing? No, we're, we're addressing each of those issues. They're important issues on the table. We are not going to be uh, forced into action by the Senate, who in the latest product they sent us over does not have one word in the bill about 
America's border. Not one word about security. The reason that the other one was dead on arrival is because it did not meet the moment. It, did, it would not have solved the problem. You can't leave giant loopholes and codify some of the things that have gotten us into this situation. So what we're doing right now is we, the House is working its will. The House Republican Conference we just met an, an hour ago uh, with all the members, and there are lots of ideas on the table of how to address these issues. We will address the issues. We'll do our duty on that matter, and, uh, and, and all that begins in earnest right now. Um, we have to address this seriously. We have to actually solve the problems and not just uh, take political posturing as, as has happened uh, in some of these other corners. Mr. That Mr. Well, thank you. What about government shutdowns? Yeah, so you see now you heard that, okay? Now, I respect Mike Johnson. I believe that he's a godly man, right? And a strong Christian man. And because of that, I do respect the guy, okay? He may be a little in over his skis when it comes to this Speaker of the House position. But I'm going to be nice about basically explaining where he's missing the mark, okay? Because he's he's not being tough enough on this, right? Uh, and to be fair to him, he did mention HR2, the Secure the Border Act, earlier in this press conference and how he's been pushing it but the problem is that he's not pushing it hard enough and i'm gonna tell you guys why right i'm gonna tell you guys why this reporter mentioned that hr2 the security border act is being blocked in the senate right is dead on arrival in the senate and she basically asked him well what are republicans going to do what are your solutions to fix the issue of the border and ukraine how are you going to get to a solution what mike johnson should have did in response to that reporter's question, is quite simply say that we've already passed a solution. Our solution is the Secure the Border Act, okay? And he needs to say that. He needs to say the name of the legislation. Why do I say that? The reason why I say that is because Democrats do a great job of marketing their Kuka for Cocoa Puffs Looney Tune legislation, right? Whether it is Build Back Better, the Green New Deal, the George Floyd policing bill, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Okay, I just named what? Four or five of them? Now, can anybody in the audience name four or five bills that Republicans are actively trying to push legislation? Okay, their, their agenda items. I'm pretty sure most people in the audience, and I believe that most of you are very educated on these issues, you probably have a hard time naming it. But the reason why it matters is because Democrats have successfully trained their voters to understand that Hey, we're not getting our legislation passed, not because we're not trying, not because we're not talking about it and screaming about it and saying we want to do it because they clearly are trying to do it. No, it's because we don't have enough uh, seats in the House or the Senate. This is why you should vote for us. This is why you should come out and vote for us. They never take the stupid strategy of trying to say, oh, well, we can't do anything. Uh, the president has to do it. Therefore, we don't need legislation. Biden is the only one that can fix the border which is an incredibly stupid thing to say. But hey, that didn't stop dummy Tim Scott from going on Fox News and saying that after this election. Person, one person in America today could close our southern border. He'd rather have the issue than solve the problem. That's why we need a new president. Second. So again, why vote for Republicans? Right? Why vote for Republicans if they're telling you to your face, well, we can't do nothing about it. Again, this is what I'm talking about. Incompetence incompetent leadership, incompetent politicians. What the Speaker of the House should have said, what Mike Johnson should have said in response to his report is that we have done our jobs. The GOP has a solution to secure the border. It is the Secure the Border Act. It is sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk. Did you ask Chuck Schumer why he refuses to put the Secure the Border Act on the floor to secure our border, to protect our country? Have you asked Chuck Schumer why is he allowing our country to be invaded why is he allowing his own districts and his own cities and his own state to be invaded by illegal immigrants? Why is it that he is not putting the solution on the floor to vote? Why is he overthrowing democracy? Why is he obstructing? Why is he refusing to govern? Have you asked him that question? That's what Mike Johnson should have said. Go ask Chuck Schumer because Chuck Schumer is in the way right now of our solution being passed. But when it comes to this foreign aid spending, we personally believe as Republicans that we should protect our borders first. And we really don't want to compromise on that. We don't think that we should have to send money overseas to protect other people's borders before our border is fixed. But if Democrats insist that their number one priority is to protect everybody else's borders and not ours, 
in order to get our border protected because we care about us the most and we know that we have to work with Democrats, okay, that we need them in order to pass legislation, we're willing to compromise, but the compromise has to be our border solution. We have to close the border. It has to be the Secure the Border Act along with the foreign aid spending. But what we're not going to do is to send foreign aid to some other country without passing our legislation to secure the border. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. So the people that are actually really holding things up, because I already told you we're willing to compromise, even though we don't want to, we, we shouldn't have to compromise our borders for somebody else's borders. But hey, we're willing to be bipartisan. The bipartisan issue is the Secure the Border Act and foreign aid spending. Anything less than that, we can't do it. We wouldn't be doing our jobs. And every single Republican in the House and the Senate should go on national television. Anytime they have an interview, anytime they get asked any questions, that's exactly what they should be saying. Verbatim, right? Verbatim, this is what you say. Why do I say that? Well, the reason why I say that is because it reframes the issue. It now makes it seem like the GOP's priority, number one priority, is America's border. And Democrats' number one priority is Ukraine's border. So now, when you're talking about your own legislation, and you're saying, no, that is the solution, that we, we've already come to a bipartisan agreement, right? Like the Secure the Border Act plus foreign aid spending is bipartisan because we don't want to send money overseas, Okay, we don't want to do that. We want to secure our border. That's what we're focused on right now. But if Democrats are forcing us to do that, okay, we'll be bipartisan about it. Now it makes it look like Democrats are the ones that are refusing to compromise. Why? It's because Republicans are already saying we're compromising on sending foreign aid spending abroad. But the problem is that Republicans, they want to send foreign aid spending abroad, right? So now it looks like that, well, Democrats and Republicans both agree on that. And what they really have to compromise on is the border. And that's how you got the so-called bipartisan border deal that didn't secure the border. The reason why is because you're negotiating on an issue that you shouldn't have to negotiate on. Because the bipartisanship, the, the middle ground should have been for aid spending plus secure the border act. Okay? The compromise shouldn't be not securing the border and foreign aid spending, but Republicans put themselves in that situation because they decided that they would much rather go with, well, we don't need legislation. Biden should do it with executive orders. And then the so-called, you know, bipartisan Republicans or moderate Republicans saying, well, we'll try to work with Democrats on a border solution instead of the whole party being on board with the border solution that, that was already passed in the House by Republicans. I mean, this is not hard, man. But that takes a party that actually really wants to secure the border. The only thing that both parties in Congress really want to do is send money overseas. And it's going to get done, guys. I'm telling you. It's going to get done because Mike Johnson, as Speaker of the House, he only has but so much power to hold up that legislation. Democrats are already plotting how to overthrow him and to get a vote on the legislation regardless. And so that's that's going from the House to the Senate. Let's talk about this $95 billion foreign aid package that's going from the Senate to the House. The Senate passing that yesterday, setting up what is the showdown in the House. There is some talk that Democrats may try to maneuver around that using different procedures that are frankly kind of difficult to do. It's hard to thread that needle. Help everyone understand how that would work, what that might look like. Yeah, Jessica, difficult is an understatement when you talk about these procedural maneuvers to try to force a vote on this $95 billion foreign aid package. The reason why we're talking about these procedural gambits is because Speaker Johnson uh, very strongly suggested that he does not plan to bring this foreign aid package to the House floor, putting out a statement uh, just before the vote uh, on Monday, essentially saying that because it excludes border security policy, it's a non-starter in the House. So now we're hearing some increased chatter about what's called a discharge petition, which again is that procedural maneuver that can circumvent leadership and force a vote on legislation. I won't bore you with the nitty gritty details, <laughs> but essentially what you need here is a majority of the chamber to support this effort to force a vote on the House floor. Now, Democrats from the debt limit showdown last year already have what's called a ripe discharge petition. It means that it has gone through all of the procedural hurdles and the time uh, restraints and it's ready to go. That has 213 
signatures. Of course, you need 218 to be able to force a vote on the floor. So that's five Republicans right there that are needed to sign on, though it'll likely uh, decrease to four with Tom Swazi coming to Washington and likely signing his name on the petition. A wrinkle in this process, though, is that a number of progressive lawmakers are expected to actually remove their name from that petition, uh, despite previously signing it uh, in protest of including Israel aid in the supplemental without any conditions. Some progressives raising concerns, humanitarian concerns about individuals in the Gaza Strip. Uh, so it's right now an open question of how many Republicans would be needed to sign on. And Jessica, you know this, any number of Republicans sign on, even if a small number, would be an extreme uphill battle because signing a discharge petition when you're in the majority is kind of like the nuclear option. It is a major, major, major rebuke of leadership. No doubt about it. We will keep our eye on that. Michael Schnell of The Hill, thank you so much. Great to see you. And that's probably what they're going to do because Democrats don't just say, oh, well, it's dead in the House. The Speaker is not going to take it up. Let's take our ball and go home. No. They continue to push, push, and push, push, and push on things that they see as a priority. And clearly they're showing you they really do prioritize protecting other countries' borders over America's borders. The only problem is that it seems like to me that the GOP don't really care about protecting our borders enough. Because just because Chuck Schumer refuses to take up the bill, that doesn't mean it's over. That doesn't mean you still can't use leverage. That doesn't mean that you can't protest it. That doesn't mean that you can't put public pressure on him to force a vote. You force the vote. That's what you do. You go on every single uh, liberal media outlet and you say, our solution to close the border is sitting right there in Chuck Schumer's desk. Ask Chuck Schumer why he refuses to put the bill on the floor for a vote. Does he not believe in democracy? He's not respecting the will of the House. He's obstructing. And then you let Democrats take the blame for it. You let Democrats be the ones to seem like they don't want to secure the board because they don't. But under no circumstances should you ever have the American people think that the GOP does not have a solution. They should never think that. Because it's so damn obvious that we do. You've been kicking and screaming and crying about it and, and protesting and showing up to Chuck Schumer's office and demanding that he put the bill on the floor. That's what you should be doing if you want it bad enough. Because I guarantee you, if uh, it was a bill to protect Israel's borders, they'd be right on it. In fact, here's a fact. The only real border solution that Republicans have passed in the House is literally a solution to stop Hamas from coming into the United States, right? So they literally passed a bill that would automatically deport Hamas illegals to any country without consideration, while at the same time telling the American people, we don't need legislation to secure the border, right? Biden can do it. Wait, why did you pass legislation to secure the border from Hamas if legislation can't secure the border? Apparently, legislation works to keep Hamas out of the country, but it doesn't work to keep the other illegals out of the country? How does that work? Why are you not trying to deport the other illegals like you're trying to deport Hamas? Again, it's amazing how, how that works. Again, it's just, it's just so funny. Anything having to do with Israel... Republicans are, all of a sudden, they can grow some cojones. They get a spine. They can get the job done. Legislation works. But when anything, oh, well, I, I don't know, man. Biden got to do it. <laughs> Again, don't fall for this. Expect and demand more from the Republican Party. This is why they're losing. When they should be winning, they should be blowing out these races. They're losing because they're not living up to expectations. They're not presenting solutions that actually motivate people to go out and to vote because people don't trust them to solve the problem because they're not actually fighting to solve the problem. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.